Hello there. What's going on, everybody? Today I'll be bringing you my full review of Nemesis. This is the latest game designed by Adam Kwapinski, brought to you by Awaken Realms. Uh, that might sound familiar because they also brought to us Lords of Hellas, which if you've seen my review for that, you'll know that that is one of my favorite games of the year. Absolutely love Lords of Hellas, so I was very excited to get a look at Nemesis. Now, I've already done an unboxing, so I'm not going to talk about the components that much, but I will talk about them a little bit. But I'm just going to be covering like an overview of the game, how it plays, what I think of it. There's a lot going on in this game. This is a survival horror, semi-cooperative, uh, sci-fi game where everybody's waking up on board a spaceship. Everybody's working together to try to survive and get back to Earth. But at the same time, everybody has their own secret win conditions. So while I say it's semi-cooperative, it's that, yes, we kind of don't want to die, but I might want to kill you, you might want to kill that person, you know, So or maybe you might want to make sure that nobody dies, you might want to make sure that we bring the alien infection all the way to Earth, uh, you might do all kinds of different things. Everybody can have different goals, and that really drives... A little bit of chaotic gameplay at time which can be very very fun but I will tell you after a couple of plays I can see that this game is probably not for everybody uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that some people hate cooperative games and while this one isn't a purely cooperative game it does have a cooperative mode if you find it too difficult to play you know with the secret objectives you can play a full co-op or even solo mode for this game now solo play is an important thing for a lot of games so this does have it but i think the core of the game and the the strength of this game is playing with those secret objectives and that's uh, a very important part to the chaos and and i think that chaos can be a potential turnoff to some players so i think it boils down to what type of person you play the game with if your game group is a strictly by the book, we must win at all costs, and we like Euro games and nothing else, it, maybe some people could be turned off by a game like this. But I think if you have a group of people that are interested in having playing a game that's you know kind of story driven, a little bit thematic, and uh, and more about social interaction and having fun with a touch of strategy and you know and planning and excitement and you know, intrigue and bluffing and a lot of that other stuff all kind of thrown in. It, you know, it's almost like a mechanic salad. It has a lot of different things, a lot of different mechanics going on. It has hand manipulation. Uh, it has uh, it has a little bit of dice in it. So there's a, just a touch of randomness, but it's not prim primarily a dice driven game either. There's a lot of mechanics going on with this game and it does have an awful lot of rules. Uh, so there's a lot to get through for your first couple of playthroughs. With that in mind, I do plan on doing a full how to play video. However, because the rules are so uh, thick and, and detailed, uh, it might take a little while for that to get out. So uh, make sure you subscribe to find out that uh, how to play video when it does come out. So uh, first thing I wanna talk about is the, the idea of this game that we all have and what makes it cooperative. The first thing you're gonna notice is that after you get the board set up and everything starts, everybody is going to wake up in this hibernation chamber and we are basically coming out of cryo sleep. We realize that something's happened to the ship and we need to fix whatever has happened and make sure that the ship is A, still going to Earth and B, that the engines are working. The ship is going to have three engines. At least two of the three need to be operational for the ship to make it to Earth and not blow up or crash into something else. And there are four different coordinates, and you're going to put a coordinates card next to the bridge, and it's going to be randomized because it can be different every time. And depending on where your marker is, whether it's A, B, C, or D, it may be pointed to Earth, it may be pointed somewhere else. And when players check or change these things, it's all done in secret. So while your pilot might go to the bridge and tell you, oh, yes, yeah, so we were bound for Mars, but I've changed it, so now we're going to Earth you'll have to take them at their word. And if their gameplay has been suspicious, you might doubt their motives because maybe they're crazy and their objective card says you must instead redirect the ship to Mars. And that would cause everybody else to lose, but then that pilot would win. So that adds a little bit of the chaos. But the idea is we all want to get to Earth before you get your objective card. You all want to get to Earth. You all want to survive and you don't want to be infected. There's two ways to get to Earth. There is after the game has elapsed about halfway through about nine turns, the hibernation bay will be rebooted, reset, and the doors will unlock and you can re-enter your pod, go back into cryo sleep, 
and then go into smooth sailing back to Earth. However, if that is not an option for a multitude of reasons, maybe the ship has been triggered to self-destruct, you can also uh, board an escape pod and flee the ship that way. That is a dangerous thing to do because the escape pods are locked at the beginning and so the only way to really get those in is to either manually open one up at escape pod control which might be a little bit of a, a give that maybe you're trying to blow the ship up and and get off you know so it might tell some other people that uh that you're up to no good or the first time a player dies the first time a player dies the ship's ai kicks in and all of the escape pods unlock so now all of a sudden it's free reign to get to those escape pods and whoever gets there can go ahead and launch and and effectively make it to earth you know in one piece as long as they're not infected and have an alien growing inside them secretly uh, the infection cards are actually really cool in this game when bad things happen to you you can get infection cards and they're marked with this very you know fancy but yet uh, might seem familiar to you with this uh, red reader that can tell you if they're infected or not but you actually can't tell just by looking at them normally although some people I've showed the game to think they can read it but it's designed cleverly enough that you can't actually read it so ideally you want to make it to earth and not be infected once you draft a hero or a, a player character and then you draft an objective or vice versa objectives first and then your heroes afterwards uh it's it's going to refine your gameplay style a little bit and maybe uh you know maybe you don't want anybody to die and hopefully everybody's going to play that way but that's where the intrigue really really builds for this game now this game does use hand management. You're gonna have a hand of five cards. Everybody's gonna have a deck unique to their character class. And every action you do is going to cost you a card. The basic actions like moving and shooting and trading with other players, all are gonna cause you to discard one card to pay the cost of performing an action. So there's only so many actions you can do and the cards in your hand are a commodity. The cards in your hand also represent actions that you can do, and it's this little white symbol with a number inside of it. If that number is zero, that means you don't have to discard any cards in addition to using that card. However, if it has a number in it of one or two, that means it's an expensive card to use, and it'll cause you to have to discard additional cards when you play it. So while you have a hand of five cards, you might want to play a card that... Uh, it has a two in it, that means you have to use that card plus two more cards to fuel it. Now suddenly you're down to only two cards in hand. Uh, there are also special actions on rooms. Every room in the game has its own unique action and when you get to those tiles, or just about every room in the game, when you get to those tiles you can perform that action uh, if the room is not broken. Uh, broken tiles are things that will happen uh, periodically throughout the game and that's going to prevent you from performing that action but as long as the room, room isn't broken you can perform its room action again the room actions all cost two cards so they're expensive to do and if you want to be able to move around and do a lot of different things uh, during a game round uh, you're going to have to make sure that those things aren't very powerful things like room actions otherwise you will run out of cards very quickly during a round, every player will take two actions and then they will, it'll go to the next person and it keeps going around until you pass. Once you pass, whether it's voluntarily or because you have no more cards or nothing else you can do, uh, then you are out for the rest of the round and it keeps going until everybody has passed. Once every player has passed, uh, then you'll move to the end of the round. Um, but before I get to the end of the round, let's talk about moving because moving is probably the most common action because we all start in the hibernation chamber. We know we have to check the engines and the cockpit and probably explore the ship a little bit while hopefully not attracting the attention of the aliens. So when you move, a couple of different things are going to happen. First off, you discard a card to pay one for a movement. Uh, you're going to flip the room tile and the exploration token, and that's going to tell you what the room is, because these are randomly given out, so it's not, uh, every room is not going to be in the same place every game, which makes every game unique. Uh, the exploration token on the room is very important. It's going to tell you two things. First off, it's going to tell you the condition that the room is in, whether it's on fire, it's broken, or it has slime, or a multitude of other effects. But there's also going to be a number on there which represents where you align the tile. You'll line the number on that tile up to a little arrow, and that tells you how many items are in that room. So when players want to search that room for supplies, and there are multiple different types of decks of cards for supplies, you can search that room 
uh, and then you will rotate the tile after you search down to the next value until it's at zero. And now that room can no longer be searched. So there's a finite amount of items that you can search for, and there's a finite amount of ammunition for your weapons. So there's a, definitely a, a sense of urgency in this game, and that gives it that survival horror feel, and that you don't have infinite ammo, and there isn't infinite items for you to search. So you have to use your actions and your basically your disposable items and uh, actions wisely. So after you've moved, you are also going to roll a die. The black die is your noise die, and you're going to roll this die, and that is going to determine how much noise you make and where you've made noise. Uh, every corridor coming in or out of a room has a number on it, so you will roll the black die. Wherever that number uh, lands is where you're going to place a noise token, and that means basically the aliens have kind of heard you but maybe not shown up yet. Once the time comes that you are instructed to place a second noise token in a particular corridor, you are going to have an encounter. In other words, you've now you have alerted the intruders. They call the aliens intruders in this game, so as to you know not uh, worry about any copyright issues. Um, but yes, the uh, the intruders will then come, and you will pull from this bag, which will have random different uh, aliens in there and you never know what you're going to get whether it's going to be a little larva or a creeper or adults or, or maybe a breeder or the queen there can be all kinds of different aliens in there and you'll pull uh it'll it, there are two things that are going to be on the tile that you pull out of this bag it's going to be a symbol that tells you what type of alien you're encountering but it's also going to be a number and if that number on the back of that tile is greater than the number of cards that you have in hand that means that it's a surprise attack, so the alien attacks you, which is a pretty interesting mechanic because that means the slower you're moving and the more careful you are, the more cards you're holding in your hand, the more likely you are to be prepared in the event that you face an alien. So while there are a lot of rules, little mechanics like that are actually pretty thematic and make a little bit of sense, and I think they're, they're, they're very interesting and can help you, you know, uh, mitigate the difficulty of this game because it is pretty hard, folks. Uh, it's hard to stay alive. It's hard to get a lot of people uh, all to stay alive and to cooperate and to do the same, uh, you know, towards the same end. So aliens are an interesting part of this game because there's so many different things that you play and use multiple effects. So when, a, when an intruder attacks you, if, for example, they, you get, they get a surprise attack on you, one of the things that you're going to do is they're going to pull an intruder attack card, and that's going to tell you a number of different things. First off, there's going to be symbols on an intruder attack card. If the symbol on that card matches the type of alien that's attacking you, then that means they hit you, and then you have to resolve the card's text, whether you take wounds, or you get slimed, or a contamination card, or any, any variety of these things. Uh, if the symbol is not on the card, then it means it's a miss. Uh, now, you don't want to take too many wounds, because each character has about, um, I, I would call it 10 health. You can take... Uh, light wounds, three light wounds give you a serious wound, and a serious wound is a card that's going to ha have some really serious uh, impacts to your gameplay, like maybe you can only have four cards in hand instead of five cards in hand. But in addition to that, uh, you, if you take three serious wounds, your next wound kills you. So it, it boils down to about 10 health, but it's not exactly true because there are some aliens that are going to give you a serious wound right away, or some alien attacks that can just kill you, if you have a serious wound, at least one. So you might die with three health only. So it's it's always you know a little bit uh, a little bit random. So you have to be very very careful, and that's one of the things that makes this game very challenging. And that could put off certain players because you might be doing just fine. You got unlucky and got one serious wound, and then all of a sudden you found the queen and she got you and killed you, while everybody else had way more wounds than you did. <laughs> but. Uh, the aliens are actually one of the things I really like about this game because the sculpts, and, I mean, the minis in general are just absolutely gorgeous. As a matter of fact, the, all of the components in this game are absolutely gorgeous. I, I think they have done an incredible job with, with these sculpts, with just the, the posing and the, the design. All but one of mine looked amazing, and I think it was just my soldier mini that looked a little off. But it's not so bad that it, you know, it's very bad. It's just, you know, I think it's just illustrated by the fact that everything else is so much nicer that this one just seems like maybe slightly off. But that's not a really big deal. It's still, it's an amazing, it's an amazing looking game. The components are very, very, very awesome. Uh, but the intruder 
Uh, the Intruder Attack deck also doubles as kind of a hit point uh, determining factor for aliens. So when you're attacking an alien, you're going to roll this combat die that will determine if you deal them a damage or not, or maybe even if you deal them two damage, but uh, usually it's just one. And you will mark each alien that you damage with a little damage token. Once you damage an alien, you'll you pull another another intruder attack card and instead of reading all the intruder attack text you're just going to reference this blood value in the top left corner and if the number of wound tokens meets or exceeds that value that kills the alien and some of these numbers are higher than others and so you might have three damage on an alien and pull a card and it's a six and then you shoot him again put its fourth on there and now it's only a, a four and so that shot kills him that just is a way to make sure that uh it takes a little, quite a few bullets to kill most grown aliens. However, the small ones, the larva, it only takes one hit to kill those. But everything beyond the little, the little face huggers can take several hits to kill. With some of the larger ones, like the breeders and the queens, uh, you have to pull two cards. So you could, you realistically, you probably have to do about ten damage to them. So the bigger, badder aliens are twice as hard to kill, and that makes them very, very deadly. Now, once all the players have gone, you're going to trigger your end of round step. And there's a lot of different things that happen at the end of round. So let's, let's talk about those. So at the end of the round, you're going to trigger what's called the event phase. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to move time track. So you have an overall timer, basically of 15 rounds before the end of the game. But also, you're going to move your self-destruct timer as well. Uh, and it's only if somebody has triggered the self-destruct, which is almost an eventuality. At certain times, there are event cards that can, that can trigger that. The next thing that's going to happen is intruders, if they're in combat with you, which in combat means if an intruder is in the same room as one of our heroes, they are going to attack the hero. And if the multiple heroes are in the same room, they'll attack whoever has the fewest cards. So sometimes you do want to pass your turn and still keep cards in hand. Uh, so, you know, those cards are, are useful. Uh, and it's one of the only value for contamination cards because the, the contamination cards are really not good and you can't do anything with them and they just kind of slow you down and uh, that's the only time you can get rid of them is when you pass you can discard them but if maybe you're afraid that you were going to get attacked maybe you'd want to hold on to one just to keep a card into your hand but generally you don't want them in your hand because they're going to you know slow you down on your next turn but there are ways to also scan yourself and get rid of contamination there's there's surgery rooms and all kinds of ways that you can if you've got a, a face hugger a larva inside your chest you can go in there and cut yourself open remove it and you take a wound there's rules for just about every conceivable scenario in this game and it's really cool the way they all work it just represents a lot of reading and going back and forth between the rules and the game to try to make sure you've done everything right but there's definitely a lot of those scenarios that that play themselves out so after the intruders attack and then again, you'll pull an intruder attack card. And uh, any intruders in a room with fire will take damage from the fire. Uh, and then you have to pull an event card. And the event card does a lot of really interesting things. The event card will do something usually catastrophic on the ship. Maybe a fire breaks out. Maybe a, a room breaks down. Maybe the self-destruct gets triggered on accident. There's all kinds of different things that the event cards can do. But also on the event card, there's going to be a number and some alien symbols. And what that means is that's the AI movement on the game. So any aliens that aren't in combat with survivors are, or the or our heroes are going to move in the direction of that number. And that's where we reference all of those tunnels that are on the board. They're all going to move in that direction. Now, sometimes that will mean they move into an air vent in a place that's not actually on the board. If that's the case, then you take one of their tokens and put it back into the bag. That's basically the equivalent of that alien running into hiding. So that's, and you're just going to keep going until either time runs out, the shit, everybody dies, or everybody is gotten to a point where they no longer have any actions to take. In other words, we've all decided we've gone back into our cryostasis and entered the hibernation room and gotten in our pods. Or everybody who's still alive has decided to go ahead and get on an escape pod and has left the ship to go to Earth. Then you'll have to go through and scan your hand for command cards and make sure that you don't eventually explode in your pod with a chest, you know, with, with a larva popping out. Because uh, that can still happen. You might think you're in the clear, but you forgot that you had contamination cards. Uh, and then there's, there's, then there's end of the game steps where you have to then see, okay, 
we're all in hibernation. Is the ship actually going to Earth? And you might reveal that card and say, oh, no, you sent us to Mars. So then everybody loses except the person who wanted to go to Mars. But maybe we are going to Earth. And you have to check all the engines, make sure that they're actually uh, actually working. You need at least two of the three engines to be working to see if you can get there. And then you see if people were able to complete their, their objectives. And there's all kinds of different objectives. Maybe somebody had to just, you know, steal an egg from the, from the queen's nests and bring it back to Earth to, to analyze it because nothing could go wrong bringing alien DNA back to Earth on purpose, right? Nothing could go wrong there. Um, and, or maybe you wanted to just send the signal to send like an email back to Earth warning them of what is going on. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different objectives and the objectives in this game are really cool. I think that's what really makes the game. Uh, one of the people I played with was ca commenting so much about how brutal this game can be. Uh, it's it's really hard on its own, and so I can see maybe for your first playthrough wanting to play fully cooperatively without the objectives, just until everybody learns the basic things you need to sur do to survive to not be <laughs> to not be attacked and killed by the aliens because it's rough. Like one scenario you might do is have everybody move together because if you move into a room that's got another miniature in there another hero or an alien you don't have to roll for noise so you won't trigger more aliens if there's already an alien in there so that's maybe one thing you do but at the same time you kind of want to split up to find oh we don't know where the surgery is and two of us have you know aliens growing inside of us and we need to get to that surgery room quick so you know there's there's so many different things that can happen um and and and, and i think the event cards really push the game along all in all, guys, it's a brutal game. It's very, very fun if you've got the right people. If people are in good spirits and and, uh, and, and and are in the mood to have a storytelling, thematic, intense, suspenseful, and wild and crazy science fiction survival horror game, then you're going to have a fantastic time. I think this game plays better with more people. Having played it uh, with you know groups as small as two and as large as five, the better experience is with five people that's without a doubt because you have more cards that are available for example more objectives are available the higher the player count is but also you can get more things done if fires break out on the ship once enough fire tokens you know once the fire spreads enough the ship's gonna blow up you can't just have a ship that's just constantly burning with no repercussions and there's rules for all of these things so the more fires you have, the more likely the ship is going to blow up. But if you've got five players, you can have people running around with fire extinguishers putting out those fires while the other people are fixing the engines and checking the bridge or, it's, or while you have a soldier gunning down, uh, you know, gunning down aliens. There's, there's so many different things that can be done here and there's all the different roles really help. You know, the soldier's really good at shooting. You know, your captain is good at just about everything as well as ordering people around, which can be great or can be terrible because maybe the captain wants you dead, so he orders you to go into the room. Oh, surprise, the queen is in there, and she hits you with her tail and kills you. Um, there's, there's a mechanic who's really good at fixing things, but the problem is he's also really good at breaking things. There's all, you know, the scout is good at maybe moving silently, not attracting attention. Uh, the, uh, there's a scientist who's good at analyzing the alien DNA, finding new weaknesses. Uh, there are all different character classes, and, and there's a pilot who gets, the, who gets advantages for being able to check where you're going. And every class has certain things that make them all similar, so they all can search. They all have the capability to do certain things. They can all kind of rest and, rest and kind of check their own contamination cards to, to see if they're, if they're safe, if they don't have to, uh, you know, if they don't have an alien growing inside of them. But there is also things that they have that make them unique. And I think that flavor means you'll never play the same game twice. It's a very, very fun game. But it's not without a few minor gripes. So I do want to talk about the few minor gripes. One of the first things that I want to talk about is there are a few typo errors. There's some misspellings on some of the cards. Uh, and none of them were so bad that you couldn't tell what was going on. Uh, but I think that's one thing I've noticed in some people... You know, especially playing with five players, you're going to go through a lot more of the cards and you have a lot more eyes on the game. There were a few a few errors in typing. Uh, also, you know, I think that uh, I talked about like I had the one bad mini. I'm not going to hold that against them. That could just be a production problem. Maybe one got pulled out of the mold too quickly. No, it's not even a bad mini. I'm exaggerating here. It's just, it's just a minor critique. But my only real gripe with this game is, and it leads to the fact that it's very rules heavy, 
And I'm saying that from a position of a lot of the games that I play are fairly moderate to light with the rules. The only games I play that have a lot of rules are uh, games like X-Wing Armada and Star Wars Legion. But those are games that you, you know, you build armies for. For board games, I generally lean towards the lighter board games. And in this case, this may be one of the heaviest board games uh, in my collection. That being said, it's not a bad thing. But what it could really use is a couple more cheat sheets. And I'm sure maybe somebody on Board Game Geek will come up with this. I might even, uh, in my spare time, come up with one. But there are a couple of... There's just so many occurrences where you have to go back to the rulebook and reference things, especially as it applies to the different types of alien types and distinguishing what happens uh, depending on a certain alien type. Uh, one example is during the end of the event phase, you are going to develop the bag, right? You have a bag full of intruder tokens, but they're not all in there. So what will happen is you'll reach in there at the end, you'll pull out one token, and based on what token you pull out, different things are going to happen. Like maybe you pull out just a larva, and maybe that one, um, you know, like it grows up, and then you put a the different one back in the bag. Maybe you pull out an adult, and all of a sudden that triggers noise near everybody, and some of your people might get attacked by aliens on the spot. Uh, maybe you pull out the queen, and then she goes to the nest and attacks whoever was going after the eggs, or or different things like that can happen. But it's it's really hard for me to remember all those things that you have to keep doing every turn. So I find myself switching back and forth. Another thing is combat. Um, the combat die is very, very different when you're doing a ranged attack versus if you're doing a melee attack. And so there's a lot of just little different things I find myself having to look up an awful lot. Even after multiple games, I still have to go back and, and reference this an awful lot. And while you do have like a cheat sheet card that gives you a rundown of the, of the player turn and the event phase, it would be nice if there was another card that had that in more detail so I don't have to keep referencing the rule book every single round. So that's something that would be nice. Again, that's something that you could probably do uh, on your own or somebody on Board Game Geek might do something like that. But I think I will leave that to the community to decide what is needed and what is best based on once the game hits everybody else that backed it and once it hits retail. I think there will be probably more of a community census on what relevant information is most helpful to appear on such a cheat sheet card. For me, I think a lot of it has to do with the details of what happens during the event phase, that end of, end of round step as well as the details that happen in combat, uh, because I just think that there's like, for example, which aliens, how many hit points do they have? You know, like that one I've, I've begun to memorize, you know, that it's like the larvas have just the one hit point, but that the queens have two cards worth of hit points, and then the adults just have one card's worth of hit points. But all of those things I think would be helpful to have on a card, especially for new people that are just getting this and doing like their first and second playthrough. They're not gonna have these things committed to memory yet. And because there are so many rules uh, to constantly go back and check those constant ones that you have to do every turn, um, you, you know, you should be able to pull those out and have that on a handy cheat sheet. Uh, but ultimately, gripes aside, I love this game. I would probably give it an 8 out of 10, um, maybe an 8.5. It's uh, and, and, and the only problems are that it plays so good with a large number of people, sometimes it can be harder to get that many people. Uh, and uh, and then, then, then again, it's not necessarily the game for everybody, because if you play with people who are very quiet and have no emotion uh, and are very just like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and, you know, I think the game it works best when you have people who are fun-loving and ready to have a great time. I don't want to go so far as to call this a social game, but if you've got social players, it really amplifies the fun factor in this game. So, well, I'm going to give it an eight out of ten with the potent, with, but with the right crowd, nine and a half out of ten. That's that's my my official ranking for this game. But I absolutely love it, and I can't wait for you guys to play it too. I I hope you love it as well. That's my review for Nemesis. Um, love this game. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm always doing new giveaways. I have a huge one going on right now that should be uh, finished just in time for Christmas. And all you need to do to enter that or any of my giveaways is to become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. I will be doing a full rules tutorial on how to play Nemesis and then hopefully not too distant future, but I also have an unboxing, so if you want to get a more close-up look at all the components, you can click over here and check out that stuff as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.